हेलो वीवर्स वेलकम बैक अगेन टू आवर चैनल लेट री डू दिस इज बिराज एंड फाइनली आफ्टर डिस्कसिंग द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द ड्रामेटिक मोनोलॉग प्राउली पोलिपे रिटन बाय रॉबर्ट ब्राउनिंग आई एम हियर टू डिस्कस द पोएम द ड्रामेटिक मोनोलॉग लाइन बाय लाइन एंड लेट मी टेल यू लेट मी रिमाइंड यू वंस अगेन दैट uh as i have mentioned in my introductory talk that fra lipo lipo was wandering at night one day in front of a brothel house and then he was caught by police men and in this context the poem starts and another thing let me know you that dramatic monologue basically starts with in media stress so he in this poem also we see that the poem starts with in media stress so without further delay let me begin discussing the poem line by line i am poor brother lipo by your leave you need not clap your torches to my face Jukes, what is to blame? You think you see a monk? What it is past midnight, and you go to the rounds, and here you catch me at an alley's end, where sportive ladies leave their door ajar. So from the very beginning, it is clear that the context of the scene is night. Here we see that. Pralipolipi is caught, has been caught by the night guards, and then he approaches politely to the night guards. That I'm poor, brother Lippi, by your leave. You need not clap your torches to my face. So, by the use of word "poor," brother Lippo Lippi is. trying to minimize his presence to the brothel's house jokes so, what is to blame you think you see a monk and he is saying to the night guards that you see you were you were thinking that you were seeing a monk what it is past midnight and you go to the rounds and here you catch me at ellie's end where sportive ladies leave their doors ajar so here sportive ladies denote the prostitutes and the night girl suspected fra lipo lipi for wandering in front of the uh, of the house of prostitutes as we know that monk is someone who is supposed to pray who is supposed to preach their religion but in this case fra lipo lipi is wandering wandering in front of brothel's house so that's why he is trying to minimize his presence in front of brothel house the carmines my cluster hunt it up do hurry out if you sh- if you must show you zeal whatever rat there haps on his wrong hole and neep it softling of a wee white house wicky wicky that scraped to keep him company and then he says to the says to the night girls that where he stays he tells to the night girls that he stays in carmines cloister house if you have any doubt he further says to them that if you have any doubt you can ask to the uh, to other whatever rat there haps on his strong hole and need each softling of a wee white house here white rat and wee white mouse are totally different so what we see here 
Fra Lippo Lippi refers to the conduct of his superiors in the cloister to compare their behavior with his own. His superior is the metaphorical rat, whereas he compares himself to a wee white house. He is trying to get across that his superior, his superiors, that means the rat, the metaphorical rats behave in a worse way and that it is disgraceful to the guards to want to take away each small pleasure of the social inferiors. So you are you are catching a white mouse who are socially inferiors. You should catch them because they are behaving in a worse way that I don't. So, interestingly enough, let me recapitulate these lines. So here, interesting thing is that where sportive ladies leave their door azar, through this line, Fra Lippi is euphemistically saying that the sportive ladies but we know that sportive ladies means prostitutes and we also know that how they make money how they uh, they manages to uh, manages to take their client and how they make their money but frali polipis cunningly uses the words sportive ladies so he knows that he is in a wrong place so after being caught by the night girls he is trying to minimize his presence in front of brothel's house and then he uh, then he said in a in a orderly way oh you know your betters then you will take your hand away that's fiddling on my throat and please to know me likewise who am i and then he questions then he questions to the night girls that it is better please put away your hand on from my throat you where where you have caught you know who i am here here fra lipo lippi is showing his arrogance he know he, he he knows very well that he has done something wrong and that's why he is being he was caught by the night girls but after being caught he is cunningly interacting with the night girls that you know who i am why one sir who is lodging with a friend Three streets of his assault and how do you call? Master, a casimo of the Medici. Then Fra Lippo gives the identity of his master where he work. Where he work. He says that he works in the house of Cosimo of the Medici. Let me tell you, Cosimo is a Florentine, Florentine businessman and he was a patron of art and as we know that Cosimo of the Medici employed Fra Lippo for, for drawing Saints' picture so it will, it, will, it will divulge in the course of reading let me proceed so here warningly here Fra Lippo is trying to uh, show his arrogance by saying them that you are you don't know who I am he is trying to say that he is somehow socially higher socially higher positioned uh, people as he works in Cosimo Medici's house and then he says I the house that caps the corner Bo you were best, remember and tell me the day you were hanged, how you affected such a gallant scribe. 
and then he says that he is he is warning the night guards that if you don't put away your hand you will be hanged one day and then tell me how your your throat is being crashed by the grip by the gallet grip here we see the use of hyperbaton the subject verb object is not in order how you affected such a gallet's grip so this is a hyperbaton next he says but you sir it concerns you that your knaves pick up a manner not discredit you but he then polite he is cunningly said that i am not disrespecting you you know that and uh, give me some please stay in your manner don't discredit i am not here to don't i am not here to discredit you zooks are repilchers that they sweep the streets and count fair price what comes into their net here prolipo cunningly uses the uh, word we he includes the other night girls here also he says are we pilchers that they sweep the streets and count fair price what comes into their net he is judged to a title that man is just such a piece why sir you make amends lord i'm not angry bid your hang dogs go drink out this quarter floor into the health of the munificent house that harbors me and many more besides lads more beside then what we see that pralipo is trying to bribe the guards he offers some money to the night guards to make merry making by drinking wine so that he can go to the cosimo's cosimo of medicis house and he can draw the picture of saints so in this lines the monk compares the group with pilchards which can obviously be seen as an insult nevertheless he makes it less direct by using the first person as i have mentioned by using the first person plural and thus cunningly counting and thus counting himself in also so fralipo lippi wants to give the guards some money to have a drink so he is so cunning enough to to manage the manage the bizarre situation he is trying his level best to overcome the situation and all has come square again i would like his face his elbowing on his comrade in the door with a pike and lantern for the sleeve that holds john baptist hate a dangle by the hair with one hand look you now as who should say and his weapon in the other yet unwiped it is not your chance to have a bit of chalk a, co a wood coal or the like or you should say yes i am the painter since you style me so what brother lipus twings off and down you know them and they take you like enough i saw the proper twinkle in your eye tell you i like your looks at very first let's see it and set things straight now hif to hunch so from line 31 line number 31 onwards it becomes obvious that frally po is a passionate painter and this clarifies his utterance in line number 3 also he says you think you see a monk he does not think of himself as a monk but sees himself as a painter 
this identification as a painter brings about a trace of arrogance. Namely, his referring to himself in the third person. What Brother Slip was doing up and down, line number 40. Nevertheless, this could also be seen as a form of modesty. This paradox may be linked to the contradiction in line 43 and 44. Here again, both attitudes toward the gods occur. Fra Lippo Lippi is flattering his interlocutor, that means the night gods. He says, tell you I liked your looks at very first. He's flattering them. Tell you I liked your looks at very first. In the next line, though, he indirectly calls his interactant an animal. He says, let's see it and say things straight now, heap to haunch. When the monk is talking about heap to haunch, this may at first be seen as a pleonasm. Pleonasm means when one uses much worse that, than of uh, necessity. However, we know that haunch is associated with animals. Therefore, this is an indirect insult from the part of Fra Lippi addressed to the city guards. The implicit meaning being that he is the only dignified participant in this conversation. So it is clear that Fra Lippi is a cunning person. Okay, then he says, here is spring, here is spring calm, and the nights one makes of bands to roam the town and sing out carnival. And I have been three weeks shot within my mew, a painting for the great man, saints and saints and saints again. I could not paint all night. Oh, I leaned out of window for fresh air. There came a hurry of feet and little feet, a sweep of lewd strings, loves and weeps of songs, flower of the broom, take away love, and our earth is a tomb, flower of the quench, I let loose ago, and what good in sins, in life sins. So, now, here he says why he has come out. The monk is now describing how he was locked, how he was locked up and how the street tempted him. But he had to stay inside and finish a painting. But later on, as he says that there came a hurry of feet and feet and little feet. Here, Fra Lippolip is talking about feet. He actually means persons. So, Browning reduced individuals to feet because of the visual effect. He really described to the reader what the monk is seeing. He is hanging out of his window and he is looking down at the people who pass underneath the window. All he sees are feet going back and forth. Let me tell you another interesting thing that this song here, the four line songs is actually an, an example of Stornelli. Stornelli are species of Italian folk songs and Browning used them here as a kind of intertext. The first one occurs on line 53. Prototypically, the first line contains the name of a flower. This tornally do have a fixed rhyme scheme. In contrast with the poem, we know that in this poem there is no rhyme scheme. The poem is written in blank verse in iambic pentameter. So in the story we see the content love for a woman which can be seen as contradictory with the celibate life a monk is supposed to lead. 
so there is a general notion about monk that the monk is supposed to lead their life for only doing prayers preaching their religion and so on this ugly thought is metaphorically described in the use of rabbits and then we would see this lines let's proceed flower yeah flower of the dime and so on round they went scars had they turned the corner when a teeter like the skipping of rabbits by moonlight three slim shapes and a face that looked of jokes sad flesh and blood that's all i am i'm made of into threads it went curtain and counterpane and coverlet all the bed furniture a dozen knots there was a ladder down i let myself hands and feet scrambling somehow and so dropped and after them i came off with the fan heard by saint lawrence hail fellow well met flower of the rose if i have been merry what matter who knows and so as we are stealing back again to gate to bed and have a bit of sleep ere i rise up tomorrow and go work or jeremy knocking at his poor old breast with his great round stone to subdue the flesh you snap me of sudden ah i see so what we see then that through the use of the rabbits as a metaphor for his own human desires he is able to make his inappropriate thoughts and temptation look less bad he cannot resist the street and therefore he escapes through the window by tearing his sheets apart and tying them up them up to describe all the material the monk used to make his impoverished ladder and obviously an alliteration is used that is curtain and counterpane and coverlet additional this can be seen as an onomatopoeia onomatopoeia is a figure of speech where same kind of sound is said beside and then it says down i let myself this alliance fra lipolipi with prometheus who ignored the divine will of zeus and brought the fire down to the earth so this is how the monk is trying to ignore so the monk also ignored the will of his superior when he escaped and it is obvious that it is no coincidence that fralipulipi mentions the christian father saint zerome knocking at his poor old breast this creates the illusion of similarity between the monk and the saint and thus can be perfectly aligned with fra lipo lipis thoughts on the representation of saints as human saint zerome is known for his life of asceticism which clearly contrast with the ugly life of the protagonist of the poem so the mentioning of a round stone in line number 74 is related to a passage in saint jerome's the schoolmaster in which he assures his readers that there is no such wet stone to sharpen a good wit and encourage a will to learning as praise because of this saint jerome is often associated with a stone and therefore fra lipulipi paints him with a stone 
so let me stop here since the poem is so long i have to make the video in segment wise so let me finish i will be back soon with the rest of the parts thank you